Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Generation Jumbo. Now, I'll be real with you. The reason why there wasn't a video yesterday is because I reacted to these replays, but then OBS got corrupted, so that I needed to rewatch all of them. And that was 42 minutes worth of battles. So it was hard to convince myself to do that. But I'm going to do it today because these matches are important because it's halfway down one loser's bracket. As well as getting all the way to semifinals to like for the other matches that we're gonna react, react reacting to. No actual semifinal matches now. However, maybe later today. There's only two matches for semifinals, obviously. So we're getting pretty close to the end of this tournament. I also have four bonus replays. Just for fun and also for the sake of me. That I'm not just restating things that I already saw. Sorry for the long wait. Let's just get right into it now. And for my sake, I'm going to put all of these on fast. So we had G GVP versus the real, um, the real LG or, or, or I forgot how you say the name. Either way though, we have Galvantula versus Zapdos. It's going pretty bad for the Zapdos. Kills the Galvantula, but it's worth being paralyzed as well as getting hit with a crit at half health. It was never going to survive that. You switch out of Gudra and into the Gonadel. You get hit with a crit, and unfortunately you go for Amnesia, you don't even go for the kill. So the Gonadel kills you easily. You never risk a crit with the Gonadel. It might not be an electric type, but it can basically still kill a Swellbore anyways. So, GVP's Gudra manages to win. And it actually has Acid Armor, which is pretty interesting. It means it can do a pretty good job sawing out this Iron Hands. And it's faster too, which is a huge deal. So Iron Hands goes for Hyper Beam, but with that max defense, it does practically nothing. They go for another Sword Stance, which will help a little bit. But it's not going to really help you break this Scudra. Not even with a crit, I don't think. Because Scudra can always just go for rest, and I'm pretty sure it can survive a crit Hyper Beam. So Hyper Beam only really does like a... I think that's like a 3 hit KO. Which might not even be true. But so far these two are stalling each other out. And it's really anyone's game. I think the power points are pretty similar too. And with rest. Yeah neither one of them has like a defensive edge over the other. I guess theoretically acid armor has like a crazy amount of hit points. Or power points I mean. But I don't think that's going to be too relevant for this match. The two of them just keep beating each other up. Neither one of them has any real reason to stay. It's just a matter of getting a crit or something. Or just not, you know, looking where the damage range is. But it's fine, because Tor's going to e easily take out the... Uh, what's it called? Iron Hands. Salamence gets paralyzed, and unfortunately gets hit with a super effective Ice Beam. That's going to be enough to kill it. And while Earthquake's a 3 hit KO, it is not enough to take out the Chansey. Chansey goes for Thunder Wave. I'm just going to give you a spoiler alert right now. You can probably already tell by the title of the video, but these two, these two are going to go at it a lot during this battle. It's going to be crazy. So, is this already where it starts? This might be where it starts already. Because these two are going to get into a massive, massive, massive Star War. And I'm pretty sure that's actually right now. So I'm just going to put this in hyper fast, and I'm going to be ready to change if something happens. But prepare for these two to be going at it for a long time. It's actually insane. There's not even much I can really say. Because this is a pretty standard Chansey with Bolt Bring coverage, Thunder Wave, and Soft Boiled. So it's just like a regular Chansey you would see in just regular Gen 1 OU. Meanwhile, it's a mostly similar Alakazam set. It's using Reflect over Seismic Toss. But even that's not like too uncommon in Gen 1 OU. So you might just, just be prepared to see these two last for a long time. As you can see, they're already trying to go for moves like Reflect just to like burn power points. Same with Thunder Wave. It's gonna go on for a while. It isn't like the first like real Star War we had. I think for round, or for season one, we had Anir versus I forget who. I believe they ended up in a match where, I forgot how many turns it was, but I 
think it was almost not a thousand turns. I think it was almost 700. I suppose I could just check it out real quick with like on YouTube. Because even though we're at turn 113, we are not getting close to the end of the match. So this shows you just how crazy this was. And it's cool, but I'm also really glad I did not watch this live, because this would have been painful to watch live. So let's see here. It was... Can I find it? Oh no. Oh, not even close. It was just 99 turns. Yeah, this easily, easily beats that. Not even funny. We have the Gada versus Chansey, but see this up here? See how it says 141? Yeah, we're still not close to the end. Chansey keeps getting hit with crit and full paralysis, but since it's Chansey and it's the Gada that does not have Hyper Beam, it means you can still take on this very easily. So your only real option is to go for a Psychic Special Drop, which you're just not getting. Like, I don't even, I don't even know how that's even possible. Like, they use... They literally use, like, all their Psychics, and there's, like, still no Special Drop. And that pretty much gets rid of any chance the real GR had at winning this. Or no. Actually, no, because Chansey's using Struggle right now. But yeah, and Chansey's actually is using Struggle. So I guess now we can just uh, put it back to normal. Or actually, no, we'll put it on fast, because we still got, like, another, like, 10 turns left. I wish I was joking about that. But funny enough, I'm pretty sure because the Gen 1 struggle is in fact a stab move. Not that it's going to do much, but it's funny. Alakazam still has a few power points before it has used struggle though. So even if Alakazam doesn't do anything, it is still winning just because the chance he's being forced to go in the recoil with no way to heal. So just an absolutely insane match. Zam goes for paralysis. And it's going to keep doing that. Or keep going for recover, I mean. Because that's the only thing it can do. Which, it's funny that that's its last move. But doesn't that the Ganondale have? Yeah, the Ganondale still has power points. So... I guess there's no real reason to switch. But at the same time, I feel like... You can finish this a lot faster by just taking on the Ganondale. Although it is a lot funnier having the Alakazam just stall it out and forcing Chansey to kill itself with, with struggle. Zam only has a few. Oh, one one recover left. That's funny. It goes for the last recover. Chansey's fully paralyzed. Zam goes for struggle. It's a critical hit. So Zam kills the Chansey, and there is game one. One hundred and ninety-one turns. It almost lasted two hundred turns. Yeah, this is part of the reason why I was able to convince myself, yeah, you need to react to the replays anyways, because that, that was content. A lot of it sped up, but I don't think you care. Because I don't think you want to, I mean, you really want me to, I can rewatch the replay, but I'm really slow. Anyone want that? Let me know in the comments, I'll gladly do it for you. Okay, not glad we do it, I'll begrudgingly do it. But round two, Jinx vs. Galvantula. They don't want to risk a crit, so they switch out of Jinx. Galvantua goes for Thunder Wave. Chansey goes for Thunder Wave as well. But Galvantua is usually used as a suicide lead, which I disagree with, but you definitely have to respect it, no doubt about it. Chansey goes for Ice Beam, but with full paralysis, it means that Galvantua actually managed to win 1v1. So even though Galvantua also wins Poison Jab, there's actually some merit to it using Slash. And this Jinx has Seismic Toss, which is very spicy. Zam goes for a Thunder Wave. Jinx misses Wealthy Kiss, so you got lucky there. But to my surprise, they actually stayed in. But so far, it's going pretty well for you. Jinx is forced to switch out. Booja gets hit with a special drop. <laughs> Where were these special drops in game one, am I right? And to my surprise, Gudra manages to drive. They can go for rest. Zam goes to reflect. Might as well take the opportunity to make it completely unkillable. A crit is annoying, and a special drop means you're gonna die. If it weren't for the fact you got another crit, so it'll just beat you even harder. Now that paralysis was very lucky. That second one was also pretty lucky. 
you go for Psychic, might as well just try to go for a special drop, which you managed to get. You managed to paralyze it, and now you need to win the speed tie, but you can't even do that because it's a special drop. But you managed to heal off anyway, so it's fine. And it comes Iron Hands, who foolishly sets up, but luckily, the ZM gets fully paralyzed, so you got very lucky there. And it comes Gudra, but now this Iron Hands is going to kill a lot of stuff, or at least it would if it weren't for Gudra using Acid Armor. Now, unfortunately, the Gudra was forced to heal. I feel like maybe you could have gone for another Acid Armor first, but I'm not sure. But Gudra's forced to rest again, so now the Iron Hands can just focus and 3-hit kill it with Earthquake. Or at least it would, one for Hyper Beam missing. But there we go, it's taken out. Iron Hands dies to a max attack Iron Hands. Charles comes in, but the damage has already been done. Even Earthquake doesn't kill, but Hyper Beam most certainly does. So the real GR wins game two. Now, because I already did these matches, all of the brackets are already updated. So I'll just show those before the bonus matches. Which is unfortunate. But now we have the really important one. Gobby versus Sotina. Sotina, one of the better players to like join us for season two. Same with Gobby. Gobby was the one that beat me. And Sotina, I'm gonna be real, was the main one that Cyber DJ was planning on facing against during the winners bracket finals. So this should be a fun match. Let's just get into it. All right, we have Lee Jinx versus Lee Jolteon. Jolteon goes for paralysis, and Jolteon gets put to sleep. Unfortunate. You have Lapras versus Zam. Unfortunately, that special drop's gonna really annoy you. You don't get any paralysis, unfortunately. And for whatever reason, I don't understand why. But Sotina stayed in with Jolteon. I don't even understand what the point was there. That just seemed really foolish. I'm gonna be real. There it goes right on. Another very questionable choice. So Rhydon gets taken out incredibly easily. In comes Crobat. Poison Jab will be enough to kill with Hyper Beam. In comes Iron Hands. And this was the match that made me realize, okay, you know what? Confusion is a problem. So for those of you who don't know, I'll just explain as the match goes on. The council and I made a big decision. Not only did we decide that Confusion, and most notably Confused Ray, will be banned for the second tournament, but we also decided we're going to wait till the second tournament to decide Generation Jumble Council members 4 and 5. Because we felt like this, so far this round, where this tournament has been, it's been way too much like being RNG decided for a lot of different matches. And we want to have more integrity with this. So that's why we're going to wait till this next time instead. But, but for those of you who are in semifinals, if everyone wins this match, do not worry because you're still going to be a major contender. But yeah, I can talk about it more if you guys want. Later. Zam gets a crit on Psychic, but unfortunately it's not enough. Robot does get enough. But Crobat is not... Okay, that was another really questionable decision, switching in the Whappers. It's a shame I don't have the original recording anymore. You should have seen just how utterly confused I was when uh, Whappers uh, was switched in. All you have left is Persian and Iron Hands, but it's just not going to work out for you. You need to hit the 50 confusion so much, and... Yeah, it's... You can get kind of lucky, but that's not really what we, what we want to see for this tournament. We want to see people being innovative and winning with skill, not just from confusion. You know what I mean? Well, here is round two. Gobby won round one. We have Executor versus Zam. And Zam already gets lucky with a full paralysis. Vespaquin gets put to sleep. Not sure why you would just switch Vespaquin in for no reason. Especially when there's something else but the sleep. Especially when you had Executor. Executor can easily sit in on the enemy Executor and burn off the sweep turns. Vespaquin could have been a very valuable Pokemon to have. But you still have Zapdos at the very least, and that's pretty good. They have Iron Hands. You go for Drill Peck. Gets a crit, but unfortunately Iron Hands is crazy tanky. Zam can take an Earthquake. They're forced to switch out. I think they make the right call that going for Recover. 
You go into Executor, they go for Thunder Wave. A little annoying, but not a big deal. Now it's an Executor Mirror. But they go for Explosion. Doesn't kill the Executor just yet, but they're going to get that chance. I think that's a very fair trade. Zapdos switches out into Vespaquin, which is fine. You might as well sack off the Vespaquin. Especially since their Sweep Setter is killed. You don't have to worry about more. In comes Zam. You paralyze it. Toros only goes for Earthquake. You go for Psychic. Not enough for a 2 KO. But luckily, this next Psychic is a crit, which takes out Toros. They go into Crobat. You're forced to switch. Go into Snorlax. And I already know very well what Snorlax set this is. It goes for Psychic there. They go for Thunder Wave. They go for Blizzard. And then I believe now they switch into Iron Hands and it's self-destruct. They even got a crit for good measure. Because why not? In comes Zapdos. Zapdos uses Light Screen, which is very interesting. They go for Seismic Toss. You go for Rest. So now with Light Screen and Rest, you can pretty much stall out this Chansey. But instead, you decide to switch out. You go into Crobat. And to be fair, Slowbro is very threatening and it's going to be very hard to kill at this range. Because they're already very low on Pokemon. So what, actually, what exactly do you do against this Swobar now? The only thing you can do is go for Haze, which doesn't even like take like finish the problem. So this match is pretty much over at this point. Because Gobby is definitely in a good enough position, but they can't really switch out. Or let me Sotina can't really switch. They go for Haze, which is fine. But now the Crobat's paralyzed. It can go for a critical surf just for good measure. You go for another surf, which is not enough to kill, but they get paralyzed again. How many turns of paralysis was that? That was two in a row. And they go for hyper beam, which misses. <laughs> oh, I feel so bad. Chansey gets fully paralyzed. That another turn of full paralysis. What the hell is Gobby's luck? Both against me and Sotina. That that is just absolutely crazy. There goes Zapdos, going for rest. You might as well just, like, stall out those Ice Beam power points. Just so that you can make sure that Swellbro does not get frozen. Which is the only thing that could take it out. But even then, not even guaranteeing a win. So Swellbro goes to sweep there. Chansey's fully paralyzed. You go into Zam. They go into Zam. You heal. They go for Seismic Toss. You block the Paralysis. Heal again. Chancing is keep going for seismic tosses, but as long as you're not paralyzed, it's fine. But you do get paralyzed. But even then, so not a big deal. You still have swell, bro. You haven't woken up yet. But there we go. Swell bro gets paralyzed. And I think I see what they were trying to go for. So Tiana was trying to get a situation where Swell bro gets fully paralyzed twice in a row. That way you can use two more seismic tosses to kill the swell bro. But unfortunately, that's just not going to work out for her. Swellbro goes for rest again. They go back into Zapdos, which I think is fair. They go into Zam, blocking the paralysis. You go for a crit psychic, no special drop, which is something, I guess. But that's a second crit, which you definitely did not want to see. There's another crit, <laughs> and the special drop. No. Oh. I just, this is just crazy. Ice Beam doesn't even do that much. But you can go for Thunderbolt, it's going to do decent damage. I personally would have just gone for a Light Screen. But now you can go for Drill Pick, you got a crit, almost kills. There is another Thunderbolt. There's Seismic Toss, which you're forced to use instead of Ice Beam. Because your Ice Beam is just so weak against Light Screen and a Special Drop. They finally switch into Zam. They go back into Chansey. But they call that and go for Drill Peck. Zapdos gets paralyzed, sure, but it's still faster. And there we go. Chansey gets KO'd. And Zam cannot beat another Zam along with Zapdos and Swobro. And personally, I'm not sure why they switch out of Zapdos. It already had a light screen up. And you already have three other Pokemon. There's no reason that just to get some damage in. I, I just don't see what the point of that was. But 
we, I think we can all see where the wind's blowing at this point. We can all see that, like, the writing on the, writing on the, I, I can say this, the writing on the wall. Not sure why that was so hard. I think it is worth saying, though, even though this felt very much like Gobby was always in control, it almost was said 100 turns. So Satina put him a much better fight than I originally remembered, and that was with them just getting absolutely abysmal luck. So now we have Fluffreed or Fluffride versus Melon Lord. And we already are starting up with a fun star with the Vespa Quinn against Executor. Iron Hands can tank that critical attack order very easily. You go into Zam, Iron Hands goes for Sword Stance, go back into Executor, you get a critical psychic, does decent damage. You paralyze the Executor as well. It's fully paralyzed. Now we'll to see it. You go into Vespaquin. And they went for Mega Drain, which, yeah, good luck with that, buddy. Vespaquin heals. You can switch into Tauros. They go for Body Slam. You don't get paralyzed because it's a normal type. There's Earthquake. Doesn't do much. But you get a Critical Blizzard. But just FYI, a Critical Hyper Beam definitely would have done more. You go for Earthquake, like, calling that they're going to switch into Iron Hands, which they didn't. Now it's a Tauros Mirror. If they get a crit, that sucks. You get not a crit, which sucks even more. Body Swim kills you. But you still have Minshao, and High Jump Kick definitely fed into you. You don't get any Paralysis, luckily. You just take out that Tauros easily. They go into Iron Hands, you switch into Zam. Body Slam does not get the Paralysis. They go into Chansey, they go into Psychic, you paralyze it, they paralyze you, good to make sure they get that out of the way. Then you go into Vespaquin, unfortunately you get hit with a crit, but that's actually a blessing in disguise, because now you get a free switch in into Minshao. Minshao will get a free high jump kick off. Doesn't do a lot of damage, but still some damage. They go into the Gonadel, they set up Sword Stance, you go for Dragon Pulse, you don't get the crit. I would have gone for Fire Blast instead for the burn chance. There's Walking Wake. Walking Wake hits a Hydro Pump, which does kill. They have Goisopod. Flamethrower does. Mm, doesn't really do great damage, not gonna lie. But there's Bug Bite. Getting a crit, but even a crit doesn't do that much. There goes another Dragon Claw. Another Bug Bite. Almost kills you, but not enough. That's, that, that's taken out. You have Chansey. You miss a Hydro Pump, unfortunately. You get paralyzed. There goes another Hydro Pump. Thunderbolt does kill you. And now you just have Minshao, which can always kill the Chansey. And uh, last but not least, you have Rhydon. And Rhydon's not going to be cooking against a Minshao and a Algazam. Go for another High Jump Kick. Breaks the sub. Body Slam doesn't do much. Earthquake would have, but it wouldn't even matter because Zam was in the back. So, Fluffride wins game one. Okay, the Zam is a half health, but I don't think that matters. Because it wasn't paralyzed, I don't think. Now it's time for game two! We have Weed Vespa Quinn against Executor. That's insanely funny. But the same thing, just switching into Iron Hands. There goes Body Swam, so don't get the Paralysis. There's Psychic, you get the Special Drop. You go for Thunder Wave. Executor only goes for Psychic. You go for Recover. Even if it puts you to sleep, you can very easily burn off those psychic turns or the sweep turns, at least for a little bit. But they just had to go for explosion, which is a great trade, I would say. There goes Rock Squad hitting the Gonadel, not doing much. Right on blocking the Thunderbolt, switching in the Walking Wake. Walking Wake goes for Surf. Right on goes for Body Slam. Does get the Paralysis. You switch into Chansey. Chansey can wall the Walking Wake very easily. In comes Zapdos, also gets paralyzed. Ride on blocks that very easily. Go into mid shell. You eat up a rock slide very easily. They go to Goisopod, which just walls you abysmally. You get a crit with rock slide, which is very lucky. You go for another one that kills. Luckily, you have Tauros, which is faster. High Beam does not get the crit, unfortunately. But neither does Thunderbolt. You switch into Ride on. Ride on blocks it easily. There's Walking Wake. You switch back into Chansey. Hydro Pump doesn't do that much damage. So overall, like, Melon Ward's in a much better position. Because a lot of Pofferite's Pokemon are very paralyzed or just weak. So there's not much they can really switch into. There goes Body Slam. Doesn't get the Paralysis. 
but you don't get the crit, earthquake kills. That one horde has a lot of resources left at their disposal. Walking Wake gets fully paralyzed, there goes another earthquake, barely doesn't kill, but Walking Wake gets paralyzed twice in a row. There goes Minshao, your only real hope left. That crit may or may not have mattered, there's Tauros, Hyper Beam kills. They go in the best between, you go for Body Slam. Body Slam does not get the paralysis. You go for another Body Slam, don't get the crit still, you go for Heal Order. And having just one Vesper Queen against the world is not going to work out for you. A Critical Blizzard does a lot of damage, you don't even get the crit, which is really sad. Melon Lord wins Game 2. And now it's time for that all-important Game 3. Oh, playing is on fast. We have Starmie vs. Zam. Both paralyze each other, as you normally see. In comes the Gonadel, which gets O-Code by Psychic. In comes the Vespaquin. Same as usual, Iron Hands blocks it. And I thought they were going to go for Hydro Pump, which is interesting. In comes Walking Wake, which misses. And Minshao gets paralyzed, which that alone might just completely damn them. Since now you don't have an easy way to damage normal types. And Glycopod tanks the Rock Swipe pretty easily, I would say. They go for Dragon Claw, doesn't do that much. Hydro Pump doesn't do that much damage either. Walking Away gets hit with a Psychic, which well, is special. Hyper Beam does not do much damage either. So this chance he could either heal or just go for the kill. It chooses the heal, which I think is fair. They go into Tauros. Tauros gets a Critical Earthquake, but doesn't really do that much. They go into Chansey. The Body Swim will kill. They go into Tauros. Another Crit Body Slam. But they also get a crit, so it's anyone's game. But Melon War Taurus is better and goes for Hyper Beam first. Wizard does not get a crit, but still a 2KO and the freeze. Yeah, that's just GG. You have a paralyzed weak Minshao, a paralyzed walking wake that's also very weak. Okay, it's not it's not paralyzed, but it doesn't really matter. Hyper Beam just cleans up everything. So yeah, I I'm pretty sure I didn't forget any matches, right? So for semifinals, we're going to have Cyber DJ versus Roscado, and we're going to have Minari versus Gobby. And losers bracket, I still need to face Lord Ac Acromox, and the winner of that will face Melon Lord, and then whoever wins that will beat Great Gusto. But actually, no, I won't say anything. We also have Iron Lung Survivor versus Creeper, and whoever wins that faces uh, Wizard Jesus. We have Robo Push versus Zack and Theus, winner faces Sotina. And we need to have the real EGR versus Fintan Majora and Hyphane versus Funny Man. The winners of those will fight, then they'll face Zashtali. So we have a lot of losers bracket left. But now we have two more bonus rounds. We have Sotina versus Cyber DJ. These two were preparing to battle each other in the winners bracket of this tournament. So they just decided to have a battle here instead. I don't know what happens here, so I'm looking forward to it. Weed Zapdos versus Weed Jolteon. Neither one of them switch, so we can assume both of them don't have right on. A critical thunderbolt does a lot of damage to you. Can't really say the same in return. They wait, they do have what? Why would you let Zapdos get paralyzed then? Well, Swarbo gets a free um a switch in. Executor misses sweet powder. Swarbo goes for rest. But not a big deal. You just have to wait for the wake up, and then once it wakes up, you can go for sleep powder again. Unless you want to stay in? I'm not sure why you didn't go for- okay, there we go. A Swarbo wakes up immediately though, because they're just better. They go for Explosion, which doesn't even kill. You have Crobat. Crobat goes for Poison Jab. It doesn't do enough damage either. Hyper Beam gets the crit, so it will do enough damage. The in comes Zam. You go back into Zapdos as a, as a sack, I guess. Zapdos gets killed. You go in the Rhydon. But they have Reflect, so you have no chance of winning now. Psychic would be a 2 kill always. You obviously don't get a crit, so Zam can just keep doing what it's doing. Rhydon survives at 1 HP though, which is funny. Zam can heal. And once you get a crit, oh, well, how about that? Doesn't really matter though, because Haxorus can always a uh, revenge kill. In comes Swellbro, but okay, it has Ice Beam. 
in the freeze. You gotta hate to see it. Swellbro, wait, Swellbro hacks back. Okay, I, I, I just need to make sure these weren't just like jokes, like pointed at me particularly. I found you with those special jobs. This Swellbro is just gonna get annihilated. Swellbro gets killed with a crit. Definitely mattered. In comes Annihilate. Everyone's gonna do Jack. So yeah, so Tina definitely won game one easily. This thing is not going to survive an Ice Beam. Yeah, there we go. That that was definitely something. Switching in the Crobat just because you can. Going for Poison Jab. <laughs> Cyber DJ like, voices their disappointment in the comments. And that's taken out. So that was game one. Game two. We have we Galvantro versus Weed Executor. That's definitely good for you. And no, Galvantro is definitely not better than Jinx. You're coping if you think that. And it comes Starmie. Starmie can easily kill this right on. Probably gonna go for Blizzard. Will you be good and get a freeze? Doesn't look like it. We have typical stuff right now. Cobra goes for Amnesia. Yeah, this is. This is not looking very good. You got a special drop. I don't think it matters too much. Oh, definitely not. You go for rest. Which is interesting. Zam goes for seismic toss. You switch out. Which is a shame, but I kind of get it. You go into Starmie. Starmie gets paralyzed, which is... Not that bad, really. Swellbro wakes up, so that's good. They go back into Starmie. You go into Zapdos. <laughs> oh, boy. You switch in the right on. It's going to be very hard to do anything now. Because now this right on can do good damage. You do. For some reason, you don't switch out, even though you know for a fact that Galvantula. I guess Galvantra isn't a bigger threat than Zapdos, but I still feel like you would rather keep it in. Also, I do have to say, I like how Satina is proving that Crobat is good, even without Confuse right here. Because even without it, it's just so fast, it can prevent kill basically anything. Z Zapdos doesn't go for the kill, which I guess makes sense. I guess you were predicting it to switching, or predicting Zapdos to switch to anything else. You survive a critical... Ice Beam, which is pretty cool. You switch it to Executor. Executor hits Psychic. No special drop. They go into Starmie. You go for Psychic. Be base and go for Explosion. It would be cool. You don't do it, unfortunately, which is sad. You go back into Starmie. You keep going for Stun Spore, but it's just not working out for you. Psychic does not get the special drop. Blizzard doesn't kill either, though, so that's fair. Going the Gengar, calling the explosion, but unfortunately they got the call wrong and they get killed with a critical psychic. Tauros gets the kill, but that executor already did a fair enough trade. You go in the Crobat, which I'm pretty sure does kill here. They went for Blizzard, which is spicy. They miss Hyper Beam, but unfortunately, oh no, that's a critical. Oh wait, they survive a critical. Okay, that's cool. They go back into Zam. Might as well just go for a critical hyper beam, which will kill. There's Starmie going for another critical hyper beam. They go into Chansey. Let's we'll see the hyper beam again. Let's go. Another crit. Holy crap. <laughs> that is awesome. <laughs> and Poison Job is not enough for a kill. But it doesn't matter. The damage has been done at this point. The Zam outspeeds and always kills. Yeah, so let's see. GG. Somehow I think Confuse Ray Band won't impact the bat that much, actually. It probably won't. Haze and Sub are used over it sometimes. I imagine Crobat, if anything, is getting impacted the least. Yeah, it truly isn't doing much it, it, it truly isn't doing that much to it. Are you gonna send the replay to the server? Uh whatever. I would agree. I don't think Crobat's gonna really be hurt without Confuse Ray. And this is exactly why. You see how much better Sotina did and how they how much better they managed to innovate without that? One thing I will disagree with, though, is Crobat suffering the least. 
I think the one that suffers the least from it is definitely Lapras. But I feel like I have much better things to be doing than using Confuse Ray. But that's just my opinion. Either way, Crobat's gonna be fine. You need to respect Crobat, which is honestly pretty cool. Alright, and this and these last two matches are gonna be between me and Shelly, Yu-Gi-Oh! Because Shelly had, like I said, only just started playing Pokemon for this tournament. And they have been getting super into it lately. And for the past few days, they've been asking me to battle them. I guess they want to see how much better they've gotten. But I just haven't had the chance. So, we finally did manage to have a battle yesterday. And you're going to see it right here. Alright, we have Weed Zapdos with Weed Galvantula. I, unlike Shelly, I, when I have a Rhydon, I know they're always going to go for Thunder Wave. Do they have Starmie? I go for Poison Jab. Don't get the Poison, luckily. Switching the Cloister, which I don't care too much about the Paralysis. Switching the Jinx, they go for Psychic, so so far I'm just able to pivot out everything they have. They go in the Galvantula, I go for a Lovely Kiss. Shame that the Galvantula is the one put to sleep, but not a big deal. I go for Blizzard, don't get any freezes unfortunately. Go into Zapdos, they paralyze me, but I welcome that in all honesty. I go for Jody. I'm not the fastest thing in the game. Paralyze, the big T, they're fully paralyzed, I hit Thunderbolt, does a heck of a lot of damage. Blizzard does not do that much in return, so now Thunderbolt kills the Tauros. And this is exactly why I think that Zapdos is still pretty good, and why people were wrong to look it over at the beginning. Zapdos is a special up, unfortunately, but I still decided it's worth just getting it for some damage, because I'm unlikely to get a turn like that after anyways. Tauro switches in, so it goes for Hyper Beam. I switch into Jinx, as I don't care too much about Paralysis. I can... I think my plan here was to get a special drop and then switch into something else. But so far it's pretty fine. Psyche got a critical hit there, which is pretty cool. And there's the special drop. They go into Charizard. I go into Slowbro. They try to go for Fire Spin, but unfortunately it misses. <laughs> and yeah, that's... It's doing absolutely nothing. So I'm in a pretty good spot. I did a good job pivoting their Pokemon. They unfortunately switched after the Fire Spin was done. Didn't get just a pivot. Psychic is an Oko. And there's not much they can really do against me anymore. I think I did a good job pivoting my Pokemon. Knowing what stuff to take out early. Just so just to set up that Swellbro kill. Also, as you can see here. This is even a team I took out of nowhere. It's literally just a, it's literally like just all Gen Wigger Gen 1 Pokemon, but it's still pretty good, I would say. This, that's just something you need to remember for this, for this season, or just for all Generation Jumble. Even though there's new Pokemon, sometimes it's just good just to use the same old Pokemon because they are just as good as they usually are. Now, now for the next game, we had Weed Jinx again versus Executor. They switched in the Golem, so good luck, buddy. Surf only does decent damage. I go in the Swell Bro because what exactly is Zama something going to do here? They have Zapdos, which that kind of su sucks. But luckily, Zapdos and Swell Bro are kind of unkillable together. So there, there goes Executor. I, I thought they were going to like be scared because last time I tried going for Poison Jab. That's why I went for Earthquake, but it's fine. There goes Bug Bite doing absolutely jack to the Zamazenta. I'll go back in the Slow Bro. Did I go for Ice Beam? I don't remember. No, I went for, went for Psychic, which is still fine. I go into Gawaisapod to potentially block Sleep Powder. There's a special drop. That sucks. But luckily, Gawaisapod manages to survive. Bug Bite kills. In comes Zamazenta. Zamazenta takes it out. I go into Naganadel. There's a Slash. It does good damage. There's a Fire Blast. A crit is not enough for a kill. But they just go for Rest. I go for Dragon Pulse, which misses. But luckily, this gives you a free chance to switch into Jinx. They have to switch out. So they go into Zamazenta. Wizard does pretty decent damage, and Psychic will do a lot of damage. So Zamazenta has to either switch or get killed. They decide to switch it out. In comes Zam. Zam can paralyze the Jinx. I can't move. 
They can go for Seismic Toss. I go for Wealthy Kiss, which does put the Zam to sleep. That definitely makes me feel a lot safer. So now I can just, like, spam a crit. I'll go for Fire Blast, hoping for the burn, which I do manage to get. Which, luckily, 30% is pretty good. So now Golem's paralyzed. And they go into Gengar. I go in for another Dragon Pulse. Gets another crit. Psychic kills me. But at this point, the damage is already done. I have Jinx. Jinx can't be put to sleep. They go for Explosion, which I think is a pretty fair call. And there is nothing that can really stop my uh, team now. Tauros gets a crit on Hyper Beam, which definitely matters. They go into Zapdos, but I still have a very healthy right on. So there's literally nothing they can do here. They go into Zam. I, I go for Substitute just for the heck of it. I go for Earthquake. Does really good damage. Zam will never wake up in time. I use another Earthquake. It's taken out. And Zapdos is not beating this right on 1v1. There goes Dropek. I resisted. And it doesn't even break the sub. They decide to go out with the Bing, getting a critical Hyper Beam on the right on. But Rock Slide will kill me there. And that is game two. So I, I, I don't want to sound like egotistical when I say this, but there's definitely going to be a big gap between me and Shelby so far, as I think it's fair call me the most experienced player, at least when it comes to Gen 1, I would say, and Shelby just started, but they've already done so much better since when they first started playing in Jumbo Games, which you can really see that. I have plenty of Season 2 videos on the playlist, so you can see just how Shelby went from using mono bug to where they are now so i'm proud of them and it's definitely not like a complete stomp stomp because as you saw with both of these games i had a clear like goal in mind so like i was like the entire time trying to successfully pivot in order to set up a swabro sweep so it's not like i was just clicking buttons and winning anyways i had to like actually you know like think carefully about my plays but also, these matches did help me feel a lot better after losing the Gobby. I do feel like I have better teams now, but I'm not sure if I want to use these four with the tournament, because I prefer to keep my opponents guessing when it comes to my team. But that's about it. Thank you all for watching. This is Groundback, and I look forward to hearing from you.